Hi, this is Suol Pozel, and in this video, I will highlight how to use Fusion for design and make with additive and subtractive methods. Here, we have a generatively designed part. We go from the design workspace to the manufacturing workspace and create a manufacturing model. In the manufacturing model, we will name our body net shape and make a duplicate of it and call it near net shape. The near net shape geometry will be edited and we will close up the holes just slightly. We will then drill those holes to get the exact dimensions we need. Now let's use this manufacturing model for the basis for our additive manufacturing and then create another one for the milling operations. We will create an additive setup and choose our selective laser melting printer. In this case, we'll choose a Renishaw AM250. Then we will choose the print settings with which we will print our geometry. Next, we can choose the body to print and the geometry will be placed on the bill plate. We can position our part manually or we can choose some of the automated processes such as picking a flat face to be placed on the platform or we could use automatic orientation tool to find an orientation that best suits our needs. We can customize our ranking and perform a study and take a look at the results of that study. With each orientation, we get information such as support area, support volume, height, and bounding box volume. Once we choose an orientation that suits our needs, we need to start adding support structures. Metal powder bed Fusion printing requires support structures for critical angles above a certain value, and Fusion allows you to create various different support structures. You can customize these support structures to get the geometry that you need, and apply those support structures to individual faces or an entire body. In this case, let's choose the volume support. We can change information such as the volume properties and raster and contour and create the volume supports needed. But do we really know if these volume supports will be successful when printed? To answer that question, we can use the process simulation tool built into Fusion 360 and take a look at what kind of distortions and stresses will occur during the printing process. We can exaggerate those distortions to get a sense of how the part will print. If needed, we can create a compensated shape. Another result type we can look at is recorder blade interference. We can take a look at which parts of the geometry is likely to hit a, the recorder blade during the printing. We could address those concerns by changing our support structures our orientations, or the way we print. In this case, we chose to strengthen up our supports and create thicker support structures in more regions. We could, of course, go ahead and simulate those to make sure everything works. If you like what we see, we can move on to the slicing and toolpath generation. We can also simulate how those toolpaths are going to change over time. We can look at our visualization for the entire part, or we could look at it at a given layer and see things like our infill and hatching strategies. Once we're happy with the outcome, we can create the file format that is necessary for the printer we have chosen. In this case, that happens to be an MTT file. Once we're done with our additive manufacturing we can move on to our milling setup. We will choose um, the net shape to be created out of the near net shape, which is the stock material. The only operation we will do is a drilling operation. And to do this easier, I'm utilizing the hole recognition technology. Once the toolpaths are calculated, 
we can visualize them by simulating it. 